to your use of the word involved, being involved with a book. And I, uh, the gentleman in the front row said that you read books differently than you read other material. And I think it's true. Our attentions are so fractured by the internet and by everything that's coming at us. And I, my attentions have been completely fractured ever since I had a child. But I seek in books what I don't get everywhere else. And that's why, I, and Elaine can probably testify to the fact that there are a lot of book clubs out there and there are a lot of people who are reading long novels. Uh, people are reading the Stick Larson novels and you know they're, they're massive. And so I think, um, you know, flash fiction is very popular, short shorts are very popular, but there's still something that people go to novels and memoirs for that, and I think that that sense of being involved and completely absorbed in something, um, while our attentions may be fractured elsewhere, we still want to go, I, I think, in my experience, we still want to go to books and, and, and get that from them, that, that long narrative. But um, just going back to the memory thing, a, a quick uh, little quote, because I, when I was writing The Year of Fog, um, and a main, one of the main characters in that book is actually a librarian here at the Mechanics Institute. <laughs> um, but So I think that's why I'm here. But um, what, uh, when I was writing that book, I did a lot of research on memory, and one of the quotes that stuck with me was Mark Twain, and I, I apologize if I get a couple words wrong, but he said, it is not so astonishing the things one remembers as the things one remembers <laughs> that are not true, because you were talking about um, <laughs> memory. And so um, I... Uh, well, I'll, I could go on, but I'll stop there. <laughs> so there's, a, there's an element of, um, of the internet that uh, has actually um, picked up on a very, very old strain in fiction creation that I'm interested in, and that is that it allows readers a chance to compete with authors of books for how the story is going to turn out. So this has been a very old feature of fiction. It goes all the way back to the beginning of the novel, Samuel Richardson started writing a novel, he serialized it. Uh, readers didn't like what they saw coming, and so they wrote to him and they begged him to change certain <laughs> aspects of the ending of his novel. Now it turns out you can do that uh, instantaneously. You can write um, fan fiction, you can write all kinds of alternative universes where you can make things turn out the way you want them to. And I think that's, I think that's pretty great. Actually, in my last novel, I took that opportunity to, um, the main character is trying to puzzle out why a certain number of uh, deaths are happening, and he doesn't want to let it know that, to admit who, that it's happening to him, so he writes on the internet uh, that he's writing a novel, and he wants his suggestions on how to improve the plot. <laughs> <laughs> and he has people suggest ways that he would improve the plot, and hopefully he'd solve the problem without him admitting it. And it worked out nicely. But I guess what I was asking you, with the, with in terms of the uh, memoir version, do you you wrote about your family? Do you mind me? Does that change the way you feel about your family? <laughs> I I think I worked out some stuff, uh -huh. um, and I think the, the 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 I mean the challenge of uh, trying to describe uh, my you know my mother, who I love a great deal. change your sense of self as you, in other words, did you see yourself in a different light? Absolutely. De definitely. Definitely. Do you want to share any? Uh, the, I mean, the, the whole thing about memoir is strange because I, I was absolutely sure I was going to write, uh, certainly the first book, as, as, well, I have to write it, so I'll just write it with the real names and then I'll change everything and I'll turn it into fiction. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do it because it wouldn't read right. I have in between, just uh, full disclosure, I've written fiction that nobody's interested in publishing, and I agree with them. <laughs> so, you know, it, there's something about fiction that I can't do, and there's something about, you know, the, the, the struggle to try to tell the truth. And what I came to also is I came to realize a um, very emotional thing that I am trying to tell the truth the exact same way my father was trying to tell the truth. 
and his, but he was able to do it in fiction. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see a similarity about how he was dealing with his experiences in World War II, and I was dealing with bipolar disease. And we're doing the same damn thing with writing. You, you don't feel badly about not getting them published, do you? What? You don't feel badly about not getting those books published, do you? No, I, now I don't, at the time. <laughs> <laughs> are going to be the ones that we want to read again, that we, as, that we continue to think about. And my great novel might be this new Michael Cunningham that I have with me called By Night, which is uh, very psychological and it's about a man, it's all in this man's head and his uh, brother-in-law who's, who's a drug addict has come to live with them and uh, nothing much happens and yet you can't put it down because you're so fascinated with the way it's written. I think that it won't matter whether it's adventure or it's about uh, set in Venice and a cop in Venice or whatever. It's just good writing is good writing. You know, I, I think, well, one thing that makes a novel great is that you can, is if you have the feeling of being immersed in it and you're immersed in it on more than one level. So you want to know what happens. You want to know how the story ends. But you also are so involved in the language, and the way the sentences move, that you can't take yourself out of that book. And I think that one thing that novels give us that other forms of storytelling don't give us, that, for example, we don't see when we watch a film, no matter how great the film is, is that novels and memoir, long forms of narrative that are written on the page, give you, um, they give you moments of meditation meditative ease. There are moments that you can follow the story, but there are moments in any great novel when you are allowed to sit back and be mentally quiet and really think about and process what's going on in the book on a narrative level, but it, ta it drops you down deeper to something else, and there's an emotionally immersive quality to it. And um, I think this is what 
what novels and memoir give us that we can't get in these other forms of um, narrative that we, or these other forms of storytelling that, that we're always confronted with. It just gives us a moment to be quiet. And maybe this is what you're talking about when you say, you know, you have, you remember a book, but you don't remember specifically what happened in the book. You just, re you have a sense of it. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? 